Hello, welcome to the Sky Bet League One playoff final from the Oz Football Podcast. I'm Craig Savage, and with me as always is Mr. Daniel Cody. It is Wickham versus Sunderland. How do these two teams get to Wembley? Well, Wickham won the first leg 2 0 at home to MK, but lost the second leg 1 0. But the extra goal from Sam Vokes at the end of this first leg was more than enough for them to go to Wembley. Sunderland won one nil at the stadium night against Sheffield Wednesday, but in the reverse fixture, it ended one all. That late equaliser for them to qualify to the final at Wembley. It's six versus fifth. Then okay, let's let's get on to Wickham because they were the first team to go through. Very very ruthless in that first half. Dominated against MK despite little possession, but with the direct deliveries more than enough to get the two goals. Yeah, and it, it was a sort of we mentioned before it'd be a clash of styles and. It was to an extent, but I wouldn't say it made it any less entertaining because Wickham were creating good chances. They were using the ball very well. I think ultimately, if we're talking about the two legs, it boiled down to that red card from McEachran because if it wasn't for that, it probably would have been 1-0 and we would have had a game on a hand second leg. But yeah, the first leg, look, they used their strengths at home and they played to them perfectly. Sam Vokes with a late goal, so experienced in these situations and... What a man to deliver. Another masterstroke signing from Gareth Ainsworth. We'll get onto the defensive side of their game later, I guess, with the second leg as well, because that was just incredible and typified. Forget what you think of the way we can play. Forget what you think of their approach to things and the budgets and all of that stuff. That second half performance in your way leg against MK, that typified Wickham in 45 minutes. Yeah, um, well, I'll get to the second leg in a second. The, the, one of the good things that Wickham have is set piece of the reason. It was very crucial, especially in that first leg with um, um, Joe Jacobson's corner, Taffy's over with the head of in, in the six yard box, and are very dangerous on the set pieces. Uh, well, he actually did his interview on the channel with us during lockdown. I think it was half a season after he'd scored the, the two corners in his hat trick. And we know how good his set piece delivery is. It, it's a stalwart part of that Wickham team. When you're a team that relies on less possession, when you play direct, when you've got target men up front and big centre-halves, you've got to have great set-piece delivery. And there are very few better in the EFL and more consistent than Joe Jacobson. And who knows how much of a part that's going to play at Wembley, particularly talking in the second half where teams are going to be tiring on a big pitch. We've seen even in sort of the championship semi-finals the last few nights, games can be decided on set-pieces. And I I think you're right to, to highlight that as an important part. I think it's going to be one of the key elements of the game. Certainly from Wickham going forward, they aren't blessed with pacing behind. They've got a very experienced side is probably a better way of saying it than old. But I think set piece delivery is going to be absolutely crucial for both getting them off the pitch, uh, up the pitch for leaving pressure, but also creating goal scoring chances. Yeah, moving on to the second leg. It was a 1-0 defeat, the header from Troy Parrott, but... They held on. There was a lot of defending they had to do. So that MK, all that pressure. And we had that Joe Jackson last ditch tackle, which was very, very crucial because if that went in, I could see the tie turning. MK with the tricks of putting the away, the away fans in the top corners of the tiers. And the state was uh, stopped going goal, made some real crucial saves. It was, it was probably a very, unlike you see in many, many playoffs, where you, when you've seen the championship ones, how open and attacking both all four teams were in the championship playoff, to see, a team like Wickham obviously defending very resolute and back to the wall and they got their rewards for it. Yeah, and they, and more importantly, after letting in a quite early goal in that second leg, you feared the worst for them, but they trusted themselves to do it. It was a great interview after on the pitch actually with Jacobson and Stockdale, just talking about, well, we could do this all day. We don't feel like we're going to concede when we do it. I mean, it's proven. The last 12 games they've played, they've let in five goals. It's an incredible record after... It's ironic, really, they're the two worst defences in the top six over the season. But when it's really mattered with Alex Neal at Sunderland and more crucially with Wickham here, they've really tightened up and shown that form that they showed, to be fair to them, towards the end of last season in the championship as well, when they were fighting for survival. Very tight, very defensive, very compact. And look, you have to applaud the way they do it. It's absolutely sensational. There aren't many teams that can soak up that much pressure consistently and it's, a, it's sort of a dying art, isn't it? Defenders that just love to defend. And they've got a fair few of them there at Wickham. And for all we talk about Joe Jacobson's delivery at the other end, how crucial is he at fullback? I mean, that last ditch challenge, no one thought he was getting there. Certainly not me. So fair play to him. David Stockdale made some unbelievable saves in the second half. And as you say, there was obviously a lot of contention with what was going on off the pitch, the way that Wickham couldn't get more tickets, the fact their fans were split. But 
let's be fair, they didn't look like they cared at the end, did they? I, I, I was a bit disappointed with um, MK anyway, how I expect, I know that it's, a, well, I say it's a new club, but at the end of the day is that I expect them to sell out that, that at least the bottom up, bottom tier of that stadium and they didn't. So it, it, I thought that made it a bit easier for Wickham. Yeah, I, I mean, I talked from my experience, as you know, I was planning to go to that second leg, but because generally at, it's a very weird thing and we've got to get this out of football and you can understand why seeing the events that have happened in other games since, but they had the, the ticket sales, so they couldn't be to people who weren't on the database, but most of the league season, they allow pay on the day. So we've gone before and paid on the day, whether it's home or away end, but then you can't get a ticket for the semi-final because you're not on the database. So actually they hamstrung themselves by not allowing more home fans in. And yes, it's it works to have that sporting advantage of getting away the away fans, but only if you then have home fans in to make the atmosphere yourself. And there wasn't a, a hugely vibrant noise. And Wickham have to be given credit for that as well, because they stifled it. They made the game frustrating, particularly in that second half. And that's always going to make the fans quieter. But look, I think as much as I don't really have a huge opinion on it, apart from being disappointed that 3,000 away fans who wanted to go couldn't when there were seats there, you have to say that Wickham in most people's view, probably deserve to go through both for the football inside and the non-football inside. You saw a lot of people were in support of them because of the, the situation. And look, after the pandemic, we've mentioned it on here before, the last thing you want is empty seats when people want to fill them. Moving on to Sunderland now, they won 1-0 in the first leg. Uh, very good atmosphere at the stadium. Like, hostile, felt hostile, really hostile at the stadium. Like, and, and to be fair, it was the same at, at yeah. Hillsborough as well. Two good teams, two big fan bases. Made it a, a very tight game. Sunderland didn't start particularly well in that game. Got that goal right on our side. That is a crucial goal to concede. It was a great timing for it. As you said, naturally, in the second half of that first leg, they were absolutely brilliant after that. And I know Pritchard hit the bar. They could have had a second. But I think what we saw in that game, to be honest, and the whole tie for both sides, looking at the Sheffield Wednesday point as well, is why they were the best two home teams in the league. Because I know Sheffield Wednesday... We'll get to it a bit later in the second leg. I felt that they they got a bit carried away when they scored and chased the game a bit too much when possibly extra time wouldn't have been the worst outcome. But in the first leg, it was a wonderful atmosphere. Sunderland got a goal at a crucial time. It obviously came from a pretty poor error at the back. There wasn't uh, many clear-cut chances in that half. But in the second half of the game, they were brilliant. And overall, you can't begrudge them that win in the first leg. It's definitely deserved over the 90 minutes. Second leg, very tight affair. Sheffield Wednesday got that goal in the in, uh, second half. Uh, Barry Bannon playing out wide, carved open the defence, tap in as well. Um, I, di- I didn't think feel like Sunderland were going to lose that once Sheffield Wednesday equalised. No, it, it was hard to tell because one of the things I didn't get is that, I, I mentioned it a minute ago, Darren Moore went very aggressive after that. And he's that type of manager. He's attacking, he's front-footed. He always makes aggressive changes. But I just felt that was the time that maybe for five minutes, you've got the crowd on board. They're going to roar you forward. Just hold tight for a moment because Sunderland's threat is on the break. I know it was a mistake, but that's where the goal came from in the first leg with Ross Stewart. We saw it then again in the second leg. It was a breakaway late on and... From the the manner in which the goal came from, you would have thought that Sheffield Wednesday were a goal down, the way that they were caught defensively at the back. And that was in, what was it, 10 minutes of stoppage time added on at the end. It was a massive spell still to go. It just seemed a bit of a strange decision. But Sunderland have got that advantage now. They've got a great target man in Ross Stewart, obviously 25 goals for the season. One of the best talisman up there in the league. And he's got great runners off him. I mean, you said it to us off camera before. What's Patrick Roberts doing in League One if he's in his best form? He's a fabulous player. And to have him in behind, Broadhead came back from injury in that second leg as well. There really are good signs for Sunderland. And I think that's what it's going to boil down to because Sunderland love those attacking breakaways and Wickham are probably going to defend quite deep on a big Wembley pitch. So I'm really interested to see how it pans out. I actually think while probably for the neutral, it's not going to be the most entertaining, high-scoring, fluent game. I think for people like us who are defenders and love that side of the game, I think it's going to be a really interesting battle. You saw how Sun, well, how Sun conceded and scored. I can't see Wickham breaking those lines. Well, neither breaking them or getting broken by them, which I think is why set pieces are, are going to be so important from Wickham's point of view. But You've got to be fair for Sunderland, the same as we've said about Wickham. We talk about their attacking prowess, Sunderland, because they were the top scorers out of the four teams in the playoffs this season. But under Alex Neal, they've been equally solid defensively. So their stats now are 7-14 in they've conceded, which 
when you consider they were well on the head to 50 goals conceded at that point, it's been a good turnaround because I'll be honest, when they sacked Lee Johnson and they had those three games where they struggled in interim management, I thought they'd blown their chance. I really thought they had. And to come back in the manner they have and to be so defensively solid, which is something we haven't seen from them this season, I think it shapes up brilliantly. I mean, there's no doubt for me this is going to be a low-scoring game, which I'm sure means cue to three all. But there's two great target men and some great players around them. I think we're going to get either a moment of magic or a, a bizarre set piece, and I'm not sure which it's going to be yet. Well, the encounters this season, uh, there's been a lot of goals. Sunderland three, Wickham one in, back in August, and in January it was a free all draw. I don't see that being many goals either. I'll be brutally honest. Playoff final, it's nervy. I know it's when they, Sunderland were in the playoff final a couple of seasons ago and they lost 2 1 late on to Charlton. Wickham were in it this season after. Okay, that was under when nobody was there. How do you see this going? Honestly, believe it's 1 0 either way. I think that's a certain. If not, we're going all the way to extra time and penalties. Look, it would be, I said it in the semi-finals as well, it would be wrong of me not to say Wickham because I predicted them pre-season, I predicted them before the semi-finals. I have to stick with them. From a, a selfish point of view, for me personally, I would like to see Sunderland come up because it was probably one of my ever favourite favourite ever away days as a league fixture for Luton, which would be nice next season. Now we know we're in a championship. But they're both clubs that, for different reasons, I'd like to see come back up. Wickham's job is to keep Stuart quiet and to deal with the pace out wide because, look, Gareth Ainsworth mentioned it post-match against Wickham. They've got an experienced squad and while that benefits them in situations where they're defending deep, there is going to be a point where they may have to open up if they don't get that goal from a set piece or, for example. If Sunderland go one up, I can't see them losing it. But I think the same goes the other way. I think Wickham are more likely to score from a dead ball situation and then if Wickham score, we saw against MK Dons, when they've got a lead, they're almost impenetrable. And they will do the same. They'll sit deep. They'll be compact. They'll give up 5-6 for the Wembley pitch to Sunderland. And I trust them to defend their box. So as much as I can't really lose in this, I'd love both sides to come up. I'm going to go for 1-0 Wickham in 90 minutes. And I'm pretty sure the goal comes from a set piece. But by the way, if I'm wrong, I don't mind because... I'm happy with either club to come up. They've both had good seasons and both finished incredibly strongly. Well, you predicted Wickham to go up via the playoffs to start the season. I predicted Sunderland to go you up did? via the playoffs. So I'm, I'm going to lean towards Sunderland, to be honest. My worry is how quick, well, for Wickham point of view, how quick Sunderland are going to be, mm. especially on that counter. Got some good players on the wing. But then again, Wickham got some good players on the wing. Gareth McCleary, very experienced guy on the wing. I'm leaning towards Sunderland, but I'm going to go for a 2-1 victory for the Mackhams. They need to end that playoff hoodoo at Wembley. Yes, they won at Wembley last season in the Papa Jays, but a full house at Wembley, especially not Sunderland. They're going to take over London like they have done the last couple of times. This time, they're going to win it 2-1 rather than lose it 2-1. And I guess Alex neil has got form for it as well, hasn't he? As a Dainsworth, it's a battle of two managers that have done it before. Yeah, I think with... With obviously, yeah, both obviously managers have won promotion by playoffs. Alex Neil did it with um Norwich. So yeah, obviously both got experience. Obviously, and and Alex Neil got promoted via the playoffs with like Hamilton, knocked out Hibs. So he's he's got very good experience on that. Ainsworth obviously got the experience of losing the playoff final and winning the playoff final. So that is our thoughts on Wickham versus Sunderland in the playoff final on Saturday. Let us know in the comments what you think will happen in between Wickham and Sunderland. And do you think the right team deserves to go up? Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the Honest Football Podcast, and you can follow us on Twitter at Honest Football Free. And we'll see you next time.